Hi, everybody. Um, I hope that you're still focused. Uh, I know I'm the last guy, so I try to be entertaining and for the next hour give you a little bit of perspective of what we believe at DDB, how the world is changing, how the advertising industry is changing. And it took me, um, or the, for the, before I start, I have to thank you, the organization, to make it happen that I can be here in India. It took us two years, more than two years, to be here. And it's related uh, to the fact that I was born in the wrong country. Um, and I want to start a little bit about my background so that you are, you are aware of where I'm coming from and why I'm here and why it took us so long to, to bring me here. So I was born in Iran um, like 44 years ago and I was spending my childhood there and after the revolution started and the Gulf War started, um, the government was sending children to the war so I was serving as a child soldier during the first Gulf War, fighting against the Iraqi army. At the age of 15, I flew from my country all alone, no money, no language, no, nobody, and applied for a refugee in Austria. Uh, and I came to Austria, I had to learn the language, I had to go to school again and walk beside the school to survive. Um, then after the school, I went to France, learned French, studied there and started as a client and realized like ha after half a year that the advertising business is much more interesting than the marketing world. So I changed the sides and I started as a CFO, as a controller in an advertising agency. Then I was an account guy, a strategic planner, a media consultant and then I decided to be a creative. So the good news is today you will not hear any bullshit. <laughs> the bad news is I will be very, very honest and very, very clear about how I'm seeing our industry, how I'm seeing creativity, and I will challenge a lot of thinking in, in the minds of a lot of you. So I hope it's interesting, I hope it's insightful, and I hope that we can have the time to discuss a little bit about it. Uh, I call the presentation New Creative Revolution. Um, I'm just looking at it, wait a moment. Here we go. Um, why New Creative Revolution? Because I believe that we are living in an intersection of a time where you will see in the next 10 to 15 years a lot of things changing in this world. And I'm not talking about advertising only, I'm talking about the world in general. And these massive changes will influence the way that we are doing the business that we are doing. Um, and at DDB, we have a very, very clear perspective of how we see that and how we see we have to prepare ourselves to adapt to these changes. And we want to share that with you. I'm not sure if it's the right way of looking at it, and there is no formula or no guarantee that that's the only way. Uh, but we believe in that and we are preparing our network, our global network with 280 offices exactly uh, towards that strategy and that direction. Uh, before coming to the age of the future, we should look at what happened in the last 100 years in advertising, which I think very, is very, very interesting. And it doesn't matter in which stage of the development you are, it's about the mindset of the people and the mindset of the market, which was changing a lot based on the technology and based on the value perception. So if you look at the first age of advertising or marketing communication, back in the developed countries like Western Europe or US, uh, it was the age where, where it was easy and the function of marketing and advertising was easy because the markets were in the stage of development and there were a lot of new products and services coming every week. So the job of marketing communication was to educate and inform the consumers. It was not very complicated. You had to only inform the people about the product that you have or the service that you have 
and you were building the market uh, place. And then something happened, which I see as the second age of marketing communication. And it was between 1950 and 1995. And it started with the agency I'm working in, which is DDB, and it was the first creative revolution in advertising. By the way, we are keeping telling our clients a lot about being bold, courageous, and being innovative. And we, as an industry, are the most traditional and most backward-looking industry ever. Why? Because the last real innovation that happened in this industry is already 70 years ago. Since that time, there is no innovation happening in our industry. We are evolving, we are getting better, but it was no disruption in the last 70 years. So if you are young, you have a big chance to be at the right time in the right place in our industry. Because what we desperately need is an, an, another innovation. Because what we are doing will work maybe another five to 10 years, but then it will, it will stop working, and I will tell you why. So in 1950, a guy called William Bernbach founded an agency called DDB, and they started to see the things in a different way. They said, you have to respect the human beings, and you have to treat people not like monkeys, but like human beings. And you have to start to market the products and the services and the brands that you are working for in a way that is entertaining, in a way that is adding value to the life of the people, and where the people want to care about it. And with that whole idea, the world of advertising and marketing changed completely. And this age, which I'm calling the age of awareness of seduction, was lasting till the mid of the 90s, 1995. And then something happened in 1995, which was the official, official year where internet was for the first time on the screen of everybody. And with the whole digitalization, we entered a new age. And this third age of marketing communication, which is ending already, or is ended, was the age of digital and fragmentation. We are still into it, but you will already see that there are some glimpses coming of the next upcoming age. And the age of digital fragmentation where we are living is the media landscape is getting fragmented, brands are getting fragmented. Um, it's very, very complicated to try to, to achieve the kind of awareness that you need and build the brands that you need and build the success that you need because, especially the young people, are consuming media in a different way. Uh, but this age is ending because we are entering in a new age. And a lot of people are talking about advertising will die because of technology, and we should uh, find a different job, and we should be careful about it. I don't believe that. I don't believe that advertising is dying. I believe that advertising is evolving as it was always evolving. And now we are coming into maybe the most fascinating time in our industry. So what is happening? If you look at it in that way, in the next 10 to 15 years, or maybe in the next 20 years, there are three major trends which are shaping our world. And I'm not talking specifically about our industry, about the world outside. Because in a lot of time in our industry, we are living in a microcosmos where we believe that the advertising world is the real world and the real world is not the real world. So we should forget about that one and looking outside about what is going on. Three major trends which are happening. The first one is technology. If you look at the pace of the progress of technology and then look at the stage of the digital infrastructure, we will enter a world where everything will be connected. And I'm talking about every device, every human being, every object, everything that you can imagine is existing on this planet will be part of this digital infrastructure. So there will be no difference anymore between online and offline. And the people will not ask or argue if they have to go online or not online because you will live in a world where you have the digital infrastructure and the access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That will change 
completely the way companies are producing stuff, distributing stuff, and communicating completely. And there's a mindset is going on, especially among the young people around the world, and it's completely different to the old generation or to the, to the generation before, which is the fact that they are already acting in terms of how they are consuming media, how they are looking at the world in a different way. I have four kids with three different women. It's not something that I'm proud of that happened, but one of my youngest daughters, she was asking me a question as she was seven. Seven, she's not 12. She was asking me, Dad, how were the people get connected to the internet as there were no computers? So in her world, there is no difference and there is no differentiation between online and offline anymore. And you will see that getting more and more and more and more obvious in the next 10 to 15 years. That's the first major trend. The second major trend is that a lot of people in our world are starting to ask themselves, what do I really need to be a happy human being? Do I need to have the latest car, the, the, the most hippest fashion brand, or do I have to have big money to be happy, or there is something else in the life? It's a small trend at the moment, and it's not related to the developed countries or to the less developed countries. It's a mindset of the people, based on what is going on in this planet, that they are starting to question a lot of the most substantial uh, things in the life or in the, in the system of marketing as we saw it. And it will be a huge trend, I believe. And there's a third thing which is going on, which since the last crisis, you see it, especially in the developed world, um, that the system of capitalism, the way that we constructed that, is not working anymore. We are not living in a financial crisis, especially in Europe or in the US. We are living in a system crisis. Why? Because the way that capitalism developed itself in the last 30 years will not work anymore. I don't believe that growth should be related to only quantity. I believe that we have to redefine the system, and I believe in capitalism as a system. But the whole idea of capitalism and free market was around, if you are acting in a free market, the quality should always win quality and not quantity. That means for us marketers that we have a special responsibility to stop bullshitting around and selling people stuff that they don't need. And if you look at what happened in the US because of the real estate crisis, and I'm saying it and I'm, and I'm getting a lot of critics about it, and I'm pointing to our industry and to the, to the people in our industry and I say, you should not blame the bankers about the crisis that happened in the US. You should blame yourself because the bankers were only giving the money. Who were the people who were telling the Americans that they should have a house, they should have the newest SUV, they should possess as much as they can in a lot of different things to identify themselves as a right human being. That was the marketing world. And that shows us that we have a very, very special responsibility in terms of what do we want to do and how we should do it to shape the society in the right way. Um, so I believe we are entering a new age based on these this three mega trends. And I'm calling it the age of brand networks. Why brand networks? Because I believe that if you want to be a successful company in the future, you have to deliver, and I'm not talking about promising, you have to deliver on every possible touch point towards your customers a substantial and relevant experience. And if you're not doing that, you're not building a brand network, and you will not be a successful company because, because of the digital infrastructure, because of the change in the mindset of the people. A lot of people will know in real time that you are bullshitting around. And it will change the logic of marketing in a completely way. You have to walk the talk now. It's not enough to claim that you are, do you have a purpose. You have to live the purpose. 
And I'm not talking about being sustainable. I'm talking about what are you delivering as a real value into the life of the people beside the products and the services that you are producing that they should care about you. And if you're not doing that, you have a big problem in this transparent world. For the first time in the history of human beings, everybody knows everything in real time. So you, it will change everything. So I believe that we are entering this age of brand networks. And if you look at the companies who are already in that age, there are one or two companies who are already operating in this mode, building a brand network around their brands. The main company, which is the most valuable company on the planet, is the best, perfect example of a brand network, is Apple. And if you look at how Apple is operating, and if you look at the advertising of Apple, the advertising of Apple is not really genius. It's mediocre advertising. But the real value and the real genius about the brand is happening around all the touch points that they are building towards their customers by starting to build a great product, by having retail stores, which is not about selling stuff, but experiencing with the brand. So every piece of this touch point is communication for the brand, producing relevance towards the customers. And what is happening then is that this customer starting to talk about their experiences in this digital infrastructure and producing the buzz and the marketing that Apple needs to be a global phenomenon. It only happens if your strategy is to build a brand network and not only trying to promise stuff the way that we did it a lot of time ago. So how can you build brand networks? We at DDB believe you don't have to reinvent yourself. You don't have to come up with something completely new. And as I took over the global role, I said to the guys, it's not about reinventing our business and building rocket science. It's about refocusing again about the main purpose and the why of the company. And DDB was founded around two words, which are social and creativity. And with social, it doesn't mean social web or social networks and digital. Social means, in our point of view, that you should have the deepest respect to us human beings. The deepest respect that you can develop to us human beings because they don't care about what you are doing. So if you want to change something and you want to add value into their life, you should have this social in your DNA of your company. That's one part of it. And the second part is creativity. And the way that we are defining creativity at DDB is about the fact that if you combine your creative talent with know-how and with technology as a tool, you can solve a marketing problem in an intelligent way. That's our job. That's the only job that we have, nothing else. So we are defining social creativity in that way. And what we should do every day, and we try to do it at DDB, and we are not always 100% in terms of achieving the goal, but I think it's also relevant for the rest of the industry, is very simple. The job that we have every day is standing on this chart. That's our job. The job that we have in our advertising industry, or as advertising creatives, is not about doing funky ads. And if you want to do funky ads, you should change your job and do something different. The job that we have is to find and create a relevant truth about the products, the services, and the brands of our clients. Delivering it in a very, very fresh and intelligent way so that the people start to care about it. It was founded in the 50s of the last century, and it will never change, never. That's the main reason of this industry. The technology is changing, yes. The media landscape is changing. The perception of the clients is changing, yes. And the perception of the people in the marketplace. But what we should do every day is not changing. And it's not easy to do that because you experience it yourself. You are uh, dealing with a lot of categories where you have similar products and similar services and similar companies doing the same thing. So finding the relevant truth is a very, very difficult task. And our job is going beyond that even. You have to create the relevant truth. You have to think about the business of your client 
in a very, very substantial way. And it's, again, nothing new because that's exactly what we did 60 years ago. If you come to, to New York, uh, to, the, to the headquarters of DDB, and I'm lucky to sit in the same office as Bill Bernbach did, you will find the original presentation that DDB gave in the 1954 to Volkswagen. The title of this presentation was How to Sell a Nazi Car to the Jewish Manhattan. back in 1954. The idea on the challenge was not to do advertising. No, 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 no. If you look at through this presentation, 80% of this presentation is around understanding the business of Volkswagen, understanding the product specifics, understanding the marketplace and the human insights, and come up with the most intelligent and genuine solution to make this product relevant for this target group. That was the job. Back then, in 1954, the best solution was an advertising campaign because of the narrowness of the, of the media landscape. Today, you have 1,000 different ways of doing that, and we should use it. And we should not only think about, oh, let's, let's have a brief which says, I want to push my sales, and we are coming up always with the same idea, which is based and grounded in a communication field. No. It could be all the different touch points, all the different aspects of the business. We should look at it. And it's a tough job to achieve that because it, it differentiates and it changes the way how you should look as yourself, as a creative. It's the job of a creative. It's not the job of a strategic planner. I think the best creatives are the, the people who have all the abilities and the skills in them. They should be great creatives. They should be great strategists, they should be great salesmen, and they should understand the business of the client as good as the client understands it. Because that should be the process of creativity. Um, so what does it mean exactly for our business? And I have this quote from Steve Jobs, which I like a lot because it explains and it's very, very valid for our business too. Especially in the last 10 years, there's a lot of buzzwords going on in terms of technology, social media, and that the technology will kill us. And if we are not transforming ourselves towards becoming a technology company, we have a huge problem. I don't believe that. I don't believe that we have to be a technology company. We will never ever be a technology industry. We should use technology as a tool, and I don't believe that technology is everything. I believe that you have to combine it with humanity and creativity. And that's the asset that we have that nobody else has as an industry. And if you use technology as a tool, you can achieve the success for your clients the way that you want to do it. So what does it mean exactly if you go say, that sounds in the theory great, but does it really work in the day-to-day -day business? So what I'm showing it to you is now breaking it down with like seven or eight slides and showing you examples of work from the DDB network around the world of how we are trying to define the creative product at DDB and the process of doing stuff. First thing, and the most important thing, from today on, you should stop to look at people outside as customers or target groups. Stop it. Start to think about people outside as your friends, as your best friends. Because if you look at them as your best friends, the first thing that you are doing is not trying to sell them something. You want to do them a favor. Because if you, you know, if they are your friends and you are doing them a favor, one day they will come back and doing you a favor. And it will change the mindset of how you are approaching creativity in a complete different way. It's not about interrupting the life of the people. It's about adding value to their life. It's a complete different approach. Um, back in 2007, 2008, um, I, I was flying a lot between Germany as I was based and Boston because that was the headquarter of Reebok. And in the middle of the crisis, uh, I found a dry cleaning store in, in the old town of Boston. It's a very, very small dry cleaning store. And this dry cleaning store was putting a sign, a small poster, at the front door. 
And the poster was saying, and you don't see it here, but I can read it for you. If you're unemployed and you need an outfit clean for an interview, we will clean it for free. Um, and this picture and this store was a global phenomenon. And it went to every, every major blog and major online platform. And it explains very, very well what I mean with treating people as friends. If you want to be a brand who wants to be part of the life of the people, you should do the first step. That means you should offer something without asking something for it. You should do a favor. And we are not acting like that. As an industry, as marketers, as companies, and in brands, we are not acting like that. We should start to do that. Because the people are appreciating it. And they do something else which is even more important. In the hard times where you're doing a mistake, where you're not really good in terms of servicing them right, they will forgive you. You don't have to explain yourself why you're not good enough. Because you're friends with them. And again, it will change the perspective of how you are looking at creativity. I show you one case from DDB Brazil where they were using technology as a tool and not confusing social media with media, which I believe, and I will come back to that again, I don't believe that there is something like social media. I think it's complete bullshit. Um, so they were using technology as a tool and they were treating people as friends. And I'm not talking about Facebook friends, I'm talking about friends. Looking at people and trying to add value to their life. And they came up with an idea for a kind of a big fashion brand and fashion retailer, using Facebook as a platform and bringing Facebook to the real life. And that's the case. CNA Brazil offered a solution to a big problem among women. Insecurity when shopping. After all, which woman has never wanted an opinion on the right clothes? But instead of just one opinion, why not get opinions from a huge network of people? CNA Fashion Life. At the stores, we had racks with special hangers that counted the likes given for their respective pieces on Facebook in real time. You liked the piece you enjoyed the most on the fan page. And that like instantly showed up on the hanger. This is how CMA helped thousands of women on the tough mission of finding the ideal outfit. The campaign was a great success. And so on and so on. Um, I hate case films. Uh, because it, it changes the focus, especially from jury members, to not focusing on the main idea, but, but being, being impressed by what you are editing. Um, so maybe we can, as an industry, change that too. Digital is not a, uh, is not a media, it's an infrastructure. 99% of all the people in the advertising and marketing world, they are treating the digital infrastructure in the wrong way. That's the reason that almost every online communication is not working. There is no, no, no thing like social media. If there is a, somebody who says, I'm a social media expert, you should call the police and put him into jail. Honestly, and I tell you why, because digital is the new infrastructure of the world, it's the electricity of the 21st century. And as I said, we will live in a world where everything will be connected. And Facebook is not a medium, you cannot treat it as the new TV channel. It's a way of the, how the people are getting connected to each other. And they don't care about brands interacting and interrupting the world. But what you can do with this infrastructure is, if you do the homework right, that having this infrastructure is helping you being more efficient as a brand. Because you are building a community around your brand of brand ambassadors talking about the experience that they have with your products and services. And by changing that perception, by just clicking this one thing in your head as a creative and say, oh, I don't want to do something on Facebook, 
But using the digital infrastructure as a technology to come up with an idea which makes my product, my brand, and my service relevant, you are coming up with a completely different way of doing things. Another thing that we, are, did, we did is in France for the, for the car brand Mini, which was exactly that. Looking at digital as an infrastructure and not as medium, and coming up with something which produces a brand experience in a completely different way that you could not do in the real world. And that's the case. In a world of chaos. Where only one thing rules. A brand rises. Offering to those who dare. And so on, and so on, and so on. Um, you will never ever come up with idea like that if you're still in the mode of thinking in it as digital as a medium. Never ever. Because you're still looking at it as a new way of how media is transforming itself, which is the completely wrong approach. Use it as a tool, but don't confuse it with an idea. Technology is not replacing the idea. You still have to have an idea, but use technology as a tool to make it happen. <clears throat> Another thing, which I believe we are not always good in it, the best and the most innovative ideas are ideas that are simple and very clear. Because, as I said, the people outside, they don't care about advertising. They have other worries. They have to work and they have to earn money. They have to feed their children and so on and so on and so on. They don't care about what we are doing. I don't believe that anybody in India would care if you won, uh, if, you, if you win today or tonight a gold or a silver in the direct category here at Goa Fest. I don't think so. It's not relevant for the life of the people outside. But what is relevant for the life of the people outside is if you're coming with an idea which is adding something into their life that they, they can use it in a way where they say, I care about it, it's adding value in my life, and I want to share it with my friends because I like it. And it's a very, very tough task. As I said, don't confuse the microcosmos of an agency with the real world. And we are doing it in a lot of times, especially by, by looking at work and saying, that's an amazing piece. It's only an amazing piece if it has a relevance in the real life. And we have to be simple in what we are doing because the people don't have the time to take care of it. And in a lot of times, if I'm seeing an idea coming from our agencies, even the people who are trying to explain it, they need 200 different PowerPoint charts to explain you the idea. Where I would say, if you need 200 charts to explain an idea, something is wrong with the idea. It has to be simple. And I'm not talking about being simplistic. I'm talking about the ultimate way of sophistication is being simple. Because you have been going through a problem in a very, very deepful way, and you have been cracking it and coming up with the most genuine solution. 
That's a radio ad that you will, you will see now and hear. It's coming from DDB Poland from McDonald's. And it's a simple idea based on a human insight using a medium like radio to make it happen. And again, if you look at it, it's so simple that everybody can understand it. But it's also so simple and genuine that the people say, wow, it's useful. And that's the idea. In the morning, people usually set their alarm clocks to full or half past the hour. A lot of them choose radio stations instead of regular alarm clock tones to wake them up. That is why we broadcast our radio spots at 7, 7.30 and 8 o'clock sharp, postponing the news that is always broadcast at these hours. We had paid attention to detail. We had even set the jingle starting the commercial break to play a few seconds before the full hour and half past the hour. This way, when their radio alarm clocks went off, people could hear commercials that sounded like an alarm. Each commercial consisted of words describing products and services available in the morning at McDonald's, reinforcing the idea that nothing wakes you up like breakfast at McDonald's. Coffee, 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 Wi-Fi, 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 coffee, Wi-Fi,
to a cartoon in the nation's largest paper to the players themselves who chose to drink our beer out of the cup instead of the Heineken they were legally obliged to. At the campaign conclusion, 4.5 million cans had been sold, outselling Heineken during the cup, despite having just a fraction of the budget. Our product idea reinvigorated a brand and quite possibly Uh, in a lot of times, we don't even know what the real problem of the client is. So we have a lot of struggle to convince the client that our solution is the right way. And you're feeling and experiencing that because we were not spending enough time to clarify what the real challenge is or what the real problem of the client is. Is it sales? Is it awareness? Is it brand likability? What is the exact problem of your client? If you can define it in the right way, you have almost the solution. Spending time defining the problem in the right way helps you a lot being even more effective and more creative. And also, it's easier for you to convince a client that you have the best solution. Um, that's a case from Mexico using, again, digital as a technology and mobile technology as a tool to come up with an idea to convince a specific group of people towards a product which is made for them. And that's this idea. That's a dangerous chart, but it's the most important one. If you believe that you are in the advertising business, you should now leave the room. We have never been in the advertising business, and we will never ever be in the advertising business. We are in the business of making the products, the services, and the brands of our clients relevant. That's the business that we are in. It's not about producing an advertising idea. It was never about that. Think about it for a moment. And it's not about winning awards. Winning awards is a great consequence of doing the job right. Just give you a um, small example. You know this ad, right? It's the, maybe the greatest piece of advertising ever, ever happened in our industry, right? 17 years old. You know what? This piece of advertising never won an award. Never. But it helped 
a client like Volkswagen conquered the, the marketplace in the US and it changed the history of advertising. That should be your goal. Your goal should be to use your creative talent, helping your clients and changing the world for the better. And the recognition will come. If you're only about winning awards, the only thing that you are proving is that you are great in winning awards. That's it. That's it. Think about it. Winning awards does only prove that you are good in winning awards. I don't, if I'm talking to creative people and they are saying to me, oh, we, are, we, are, we have, have been winning this kind of, or this amount of awards, I say, great, but what have you done for the business of your clients? Show me the real beef. Again, I'm, I'm not saying winning awards is a bad thing, but it's, it should be in the right order. If you are solving the problem of your client in a substantial way, if you're producing success and the people outside take care of you and the industry is recognizing it, perfect. But if your main goal is, I will do everything that I can to win awards, you have a problem because that's not our business. I don't believe that. It was never our business and will never ever be our business. Um, another thing, I don't believe that the brand is a promise or an idea or the purpose. I believe that the brand is all ab about only one fact, which is the sum of all the experiences that you make with a company. That means that you as a, as, as a marketer or as a company or as a brand have a very, very clear responsibility. As I said at the beginning of the speech, it's about walking the talk. It's about delivering. It's not about promising anymore. And again, if you're promising happiness, you should deliver happiness. If you're promising freedom, you should deliver freedom. And I'm not talking about disrupting your own business. I'm talking about how can you expand what you are doing and adding something into it, your existing products and services which makes this prof promise truthful and relevant to the life of the people. And that is changing and that will change the way that we are doing stuff, as I said, completely. Because the people can find out in real time if you are not really truthful to them. That will change everything. Um, it's another example from McDonald's about having the sum of all the experiences with the company. How can you make McDonald's relevant into the life of the people? It's coming from Warsaw in Poland, and it's based on the idea of looking at people at the rail station and coming up with an idea and a solution which makes McDonald's for them relevant. That's the idea. We are at the Central Train Station in Warsaw. The McDonald's restaurant you see is located close to the station. The station itself is no different to any other train station you know. People are waiting, sitting in different places, hanging around senselessly. We thought, could McDonald's do something about it? In cooperation with Polish State Railways, we programmed a special timetable and installed it on the way to McDonald's. Apart from real-time information, the timetable displays waiting time not in minutes or hours, but in hamburgers, cokes and fries you manage to eat before your train leaves. The longer you wait, the more menu items show up on the screen. Let's say you go to Krakow. You manage to have a Big Mac, Coke, fries and an ice cream. As the time goes by, your menu shrinks until there's only a coffee left. The passengers loved the timetable. Interesting about this, this idea was the creative team who came up with the idea, they were spending six weeks with the technology to make the, the, the timetable happen. And they were spending a lot of time in the McDonald's restaurant counting the time of how long does it take to wait in the line and eating the different products in the different combinations to be an accurate, as accurate as, 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 it, as it works on the timetable. So and again, that's creative work too. It's about finding an amazing insight and bringing it to life in a different way. That's our job. It's simple. 
if you're doing it right. Another thing, I, I believe that the best advertising does not look like advertising because nobody is taking care about advertising. The people don't want to be involved and interact with advertising. They are interested in what is interesting and they take care about that, but they don't care about advertising. So your advertising should not look like advertising. Uh, think about that also for a moment. I have to just speed up a little bit because we want to discuss also. Last one. Uh, I, sh I believe that we should stop thinking about awareness. Especially in a world the way that it's changing, it's more important to create relevance. If you are not relevant, awareness me means nothing. And it's a very, very dangerous chart for all the media agencies because it will change the way that we are looking at the media landscape. If I'm standing here in front of you and I'm, I'm shouting out that I'm great and I'm looking beautiful, nobody will care. Only if I'm talking in a way and behaving in a way that is relevant to your time, to your life, and to what you want to hear, you start to engage with me. It's not about shouting loud anymore. It's about being relevant at the right time. Um, and this last case I want to show you from Mexico, which is about the telecommunication company and how they are trying to produce relevance and creating relevance instead of awareness. They're known as man's best friend. They're lovely, friendly, and faithful. We could say that dogs are really the perfect companion for any person, except for one little detail. An unpleasant detail, to be precise. A detail able to transform a simple walk into an impossible mission, even for the most skilled feet. That's why someone had to do something in order to stop this calamity. Terra presents Pooh Wi-Fi. We developed a device that activates a Wi-Fi service network fed with Pets Poo in an attempt to educate people by giving them a reward. When people throw away the bags filled with pet's poo, this sophisticated device calculates the weight of the poo and transforms it into free minutes of Wi-Fi for everyone around. The greater the weight, the more minutes everyone gets. Teniendo en cuenta el peso de sus desechos, pues la colaboración de Rex es muchísima. Me urge mandar un mail. Nunca me falla. Pues ahora no sé qué le pasa. ¿Qué te pasa, eh? Thanks to Terra and Poo Wi-Fi, people can now walk without worries across the parks while surfing the web for free. Terra Poo Wi-Fi. That was it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amir, thank you for that absolutely fantastic and insightful presentation. That was lovely. Lovely. We'll now move on to your question and answer sure, session. Sure. Yes, if you'd like to take a seat. And I'd like to request Mr. Ambi Parmeshwar and CEO of Draft FCB Ulka to join us on stage for the Q&A session. Ah, do I need a microphone or? Uh, you can use this. Yeah, this cool. Oh, hi, sir. Uh, thank you, Amir, for uh, making the trip, because we tried getting you last year, because the visa issues, we couldn't have <laughs> you. 
I think the presentation was very fascinating. Uh, the, the group is, I think, quickly running out because they want to go for the award. So let me start. Did you take a look at the uh, pavilion we have for the print and the, and the design and the kind of work which are going to be awarded today? I saw a little bit, but I will, now I have the time to look at the rest of it, yeah? Okay, because, you know, what I wanted to know your view on advertising versus what I call awardizing, which is yeah. advertising created for awards. What are, your, what are your views on that? I mean, I think you were pretty vocal about it. And uh, as I said, I think, I think the main goal is not about winning awards. The main goal is to try to substantially solve the problem of our clients. And if you do it in an exceptional way, you will get the recognition of the industry in that order. Um, and I think everybody is appreciating if you're doing an amazing job for a big brand and you're really substantially solving a problem. And they're appreciating in you to win an award for that even more than if you're doing it for a small brand or for not an unknown brand. That's how I'm seeing it. I love that poo stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, that's solving a substantial problem, isn't it? No, no, but it's about, the question is, what is the challenge about it? What is the challenge? How can you make a telecommunication company relevant? Yeah, but how do you scale up something like that? I mean, that's high technology, combining yeah. it with, you know, uh, local placements, yeah. something like this. Uh, is it scalable? Is it, you know, can it become big? No, what we did in Mexico, we started it with a, with a small market. And it was so successful but that we scaled it up for the whole country. Oh, really? So you, okay. if you go to Mexico, you will find in parks exactly this technology and you can use it. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. But again, it's not, about, it's not about doing it to get the recognition of the industry. It's about how you are coming up with a, with a solution to, to solve the problem of the client. And it could be that way. It could be, it could be coming up with a different product. It could be... A, it could be everything, so. Okay, let me, uh, let me ask some of these questions you've got, and we've pulled out some of these. And first question I'd like to ask is a pretty interesting one, which you spoke about, that we have to respect people and treat them as brands. So this is, uh, Nakul Dugal is asking, will people ever respect back the brand as a friend? Uh, again? Will people if, respect yes. Brand, as, brand a as a friend? I think they will only respect brands as a friend who are behaving like friends. Like friends. Right? Okay. And I think a lot of brands are not behaving themselves as a friend. They are only trying to sell you something. So yeah. I think it's a question of how you are how you're behaving as a brand. I believe that. I believe if you're if you're honest and truthful as a brand, and if you're trying to really add value to the life of the people, that the people will respect you for that. Uh, this is someone called Jill who's asked a question. I don't know whether she's in because if you're not in when your question is being asked, you will not win an iPad. Right? Uh, at what point can you turn your client and turn to your client and say, I can't market your product or service because it's not good enough, but I have ideas to help you. I mean, have you done that in the past? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's the question of how you're setting your own standards. You know what I mean? Every agency is different, every company is different, but I think that's exactly the responsibility that you have. If you want to be a truthful partner to your client, you should remind him that uh, his, he has to do his homework first. Bill Bernbach used to say, good advertising is, uh, is bad for a bad product because it lets a lot of people know that the product is bad. Yeah. So it's about doing the homework and then you can do the communication for it. It's, it's courageous to do that because it's about saying, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not relying on the fact that I'm getting the money for doing something. It's about being treated as an equal partner and going and taking the risks. Yeah. It's, a, it's a question of the values of your company. Uh, you, know, you know, going off the list of questions here, I wonder whether you saw the Mad Men episode where this particular ad you showed Think Small, Think yeah. Small was featured, and what was your views on that? I mean, Don, yeah. Don Draper commenting on that ad? Yeah, it was funny the reaction to see because they were just discussing 30 minutes about the ad and they're saying, that's a piece of shit because nobody's understanding it. But after that, they said, oh, wait a moment, maybe it's, there's something into it because we are spending 30 minutes with this ad. But again, as I said, the, the Think Small ad is a very interesting idea. It never won an award, never. 
No, but, but in that particular episode, I remember Don Draper saying, this is the future of advertising. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, and he says that, and he says, you know, we've always used to doing advertising, putting big products yeah. and putting big headlines. He says, this is the future of advertising. Exactly. And he opens New York Times yeah, yeah. and says, did you guys see this ad? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, what's your opinion? This is again a question from Ashok from Interface. What is your sentiment towards creative that is not on brief but still has immense potential to jumpstart sales? The question is, what is the brief? Yeah, the brief was wrong. Uh, so yeah. you, you, you no, I, think, I think what we should do, and that's something that I believe strongly is, we should e do more than our clients are expecting. And then by doing more, I mean to really go and look at, at all the circumstances of the business and trying even to educate the clients that maybe they have the wrong challenge or maybe they have to change the challenge and coming up with new ideas to that. I think that's great. But again, it's about at the end of the day, we should refocus on what, what, it's, what is the main challenge of the client or the main problem. If it's the sales, then we should do it. And then we should come up with an idea who is pushing the sales. But in a lot of cases, I believe we don't even know what the real problem is. Even the clients don't, don't know. Yeah, you said, right? I mean, yeah. if you ask the right question, you should exactly. you know, get the right answer. Yeah. 